Anyway, back to God and doing what he says. God has told us what to do for many, many years. He's told people before us what to do. And when they trusted him and did what he said, he always did what he said he was going to do, right? So, we are today in our lesson, we're going to learn about something that God told Joshua to do that didn't make sense. And we're going to see if Joshua actually did what God told him to do. Do you think Joshua did what God told him to do? We're going to see that he did. And you might already know the story about Jericho and know what the... Uh, how many... Don't say it out loud. How many know the story of Jericho and know the strange thing that God told him to do? Isn't that a strange thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So, Joshua, last week, the people of Israel, they did what? What did the people of Israel do last week? They walked across the Jordan on dry ground, right? And so now, they are across the Jordan. At the beginning of our lessons, they were in their tents on this side. Now they are across the Jordan, and they're actually at this area right here, this town, we might call it, called Gilgal. And at Gilgal, what did Joshua set up? Do you remember something that he set up? Moses, do you remember something he set up? You, remember, you don't remember, you just wanted to raise your hand. He set up some rocks, that's right. And they actually had a very big ceremony where they wrote some of God's law. They put plaster over some rocks. We learned about that back when God told them to do it. They put some, they, like they set up some rocks like this, and then they put some stuff over top of it, and they wrote God's law on it. They had a big ceremony with half of the people on one mountain and the other half on the other mountain talking back and forth about the blessings and the curses that God had given them to choose between. So now they're at Gilgal, and before, and this is the promised land. They're in the promised land now, right? They're on the other side of Jordan, but... Can they just do, can they just live wherever they want to? No. No, why? Because why? They're going into the promised land. They're in the promised land. They're on this side of the river. They're in Canaan. They're in the promised land. But who else is in the promised land? Huh? There's somebody else. There's lots of other people. Who else is there? Do we remember 40 years ago when the 12 men went to spy on Canaan? What did they see there? Spies. Well, they were spying there. What did they see when they went in the land? Who? What? Giants. They saw giants. Were those giants still there now? They were. They were still there. You think the people that lived in this town and these towns down here and in Jericho just wanted to say, okay, you're here now, we'll just leave. We'll leave our house behind, we'll leave all of our, our, our animals behind, we'll just go live in the wilderness. We'll just trade places. You think they're just going to leave their own home? No. no. But these people, the Bible tells us that they were very wicked. They worshipped idols, and they were they, more than just kind of standing and look at them. They did evil, evil, wicked, wicked things. Many of them would sacrifice some of their children, kill their children, to please the wicked idol. And God tells us that the time had come for these people in these cities to be judged. And he was going to use the children of Israel to judge them and give the children of Israel the land of Canaan, the promised land, at the same time. <coughs> so... Right here, they're right here. The very first city when they come in is Jericho. Now Jericho was not a super big city, but it was super strong. It had high walls and thick walls. Do you remember how, does anybody remember something that was in the wall of Jericho that tells us that it was a really thick wall? Aaron, do you remember? Ian does. But do you remember yeah. what was in the wall of Jericho? It tells us it was a really thick wall. What was in the wall? A house. a house. 
And so the walls of Jericho were thick enough to put houses in them, on them, okay, all the way around. And the children of Israel, what did, did they have? Were they did they have a big? Did they have lots of um, army equipment? No, they had lots of people, but that's all they had. They didn't have anything that could just break down walls. So Joshua. One day he was out, and I'm sure he was looking across the valley or something at the big walls of Jericho, and he was thinking, how are we going to take over <laughs> Jericho? How are we going to take this first city? Like, we we got to take this. We can't just, what are we going to do? How can we take this city? And as he was standing there, he saw, not too far away, a man with a sword drawn. He thought, who is this man with the sword drawn? So he went up toward the man with the sword drawn and said, Are you for us or are you for our enemies? Daddy. And you know what the man said? He said, I am captain of the host of Israel. And when Joshua heard that, he knew that it wasn't just a man. He was standing before God. God came down in a body just for Joshua to see him. And, he, and when Joshua heard that, he fell down on the ground. Why would Joshua fall down on the ground? Because he's, stand, he's before God to praise him, to worship him, to show his humility, to show that he, that he knew that Joshua was the great, was the leader of Israel, but he wasn't going to stand up in front of God, was he? And God said to him, that man said, take your shoes off because you're on holy ground. Does that, now, this is a long way back. Does anybody remember anyone else that took their shoes off when they were on holy ground? And how he knew it was holy ground, but it was showed a long way back. What do you think, Eliza? Who? Moses. What did Moses see? And he went over to look at it, and a voice said, take your shoes off. Do you remember, anyone else remember that? A guy. You're going to remember it once you hear it. Ian's going to, you, you don't remember it right now? You're going to remember it. Who said that? Some a voice from the back there said a burning bush. It was a burning bush, and God was in the bush, but the bush didn't burn up, did it? It was on fire, but it didn't soak. And God was there, so God is here, and He says to Joshua, "Take your shoes off." And then He talks with Joshua about how to conquer Jericho, and He gave him the strategy, how the people of Israel. We're going to conquer and take over and eliminate all the people in Jericho. And Joshua took those that strategy and he knew what God said. And he knew what God had done. What had God just done just a few days before? What had he done to the river just a few days before? Yeah, he rolled it back. So God has all the power. But this was another strange ideas on how to conquer a city. But he believed God. How do we know that he believed God? How do we know that he had faith in God? Because he went and did what God told him. Right? Yeah. So, he comes back to the children of Israel and says, tomorrow we're going to begin to conquer Jericho. Everybody re be ready in the morning. And this is what we'll do. We'll have all, and so the next morning they got there, and all the armed soldiers first. Ellie. And then we want seven priests with ram horns or trumpets to go behind the armed soldiers, and they're going to blow their trumpets. And then the priests that carry the Ark of the Covenant will be behind them. And then behind that will be everybody else. Everybody. Everybody else. And we're going to walk around the city of Jericho. We're just going to walk around it, and the only sound that there will be is the sound from the priest's trumpets. No one is to say anything. That would be very hard for the kids in Bible Club. No one is to say anything. Be, don't even say a word. We're just walk, march around the city of Jericho. And so what do you think they did? 
Did they believe God? Or did they say, I don't like that idea? They believed him. And so they went around. And some of you guys know, right? So they went around the city. And the next morning, Joshua said, here is God's plan for today. And what did he tell them? The same thing. Same order, same thing. And they went around. No whooping and hollering. No charging the walls with their swords. Just walk around in silence, except for the trumpets, the horns of the seven priests. And the next morning, God's plan for the next morning was the same thing. Six days in a row. Now after a while, the people of Jericho, what do we know about the people of Jericho? Who, who said, somebody said something. Who, what, what do we know? They're wicked, so they, God is going to use Israel to judge them. But we know something else. Remember the two spies went into the land, into Jericho? Who else, who is somebody, what's the name of somebody who lives in Jericho? Remember the name of somebody? Rahab, that's right. Rahab lives there. And what did Rahab tell the, tell the two spies about the people in Jericho? They were in, they were scared. But after a while, I'll bet they came up on the wall and they're looking, what are these Israelites doing? They're just walking around the city. <laughs> and walking around the city. On the seventh day, right? On the seventh day, Joshua said, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to run around seven times. And then, when I get the signal, we're going to blow the trumpets another way. Somehow they're going to know, and everybody's going to shout. Now Joshua knew, God had told Joshua what was going to happen. So Joshua's given the command, and he knows. God had told him what was going to happen. But the people of Israel, do they know what's going to happen? No. No. But they did it. They did what Joshua told them because they believed Joshua. And they believed Joshua was speaking for God, right? So they walk around the city. One, two, right? Three, four, five, six. Seven times. And after the seventh time, Joshua gave the signal and the people shouted loud. And when they shouted, it wasn't their voice. It was God. What did God do? He broke the walls of Jericho down without anybody even touching them. Just God's invisible hand. And we know it did happen that way because the Bible tells us the walls fell out. Now, if an army was coming against the city to, to conquer it, it would push, it would knock it down, and the walls would fall in, wouldn't they? But the people were standing on the wall, and the walls fell out. God knocked the walls out, and the children of Israel were able to go in and conquer the city of Jericho. Now, I forgot to tell you something. Joshua's here, and he's telling the people of Israel what to do. He says, and when, uh, when you get to go in the city... Everything in Jericho is God's. Don't take any gold. Don't take any silver, iron, bronze. You're going to see beautiful things. All of that is to go into the treasury of the tabernacle. It's all God's. Don't take anything. And so when the walls came tumbling down, the children of Israel were able to climb right over those rocks and bricks and blocks of the wall and go into Israel or into Jericho, and they conquered and killed everybody in the city except Rahab and everybody that was in Rahab's house. Now, how were they able to do, how were they able to do that? Why were they able to do that? The reason they were able to do that is because they trusted God and obeyed Him. They believed God. God said, you do this, and I will do this. Now, if they had decided not to do it, would God have done his part? No. And God, does God, God, God gives us promises today, too. He tells us that if we obey our parents, we will have a long and happy life. The Tenth Commandment says it's the first commandment with promise. You know people who grow up and disobey their parents all the time? 
they live, um, I'm not saying they all die, but if you always do what you want, you never obey any rules, if you don't obey your mom and dad's rules, pretty soon you're going to be old enough not to obey the government's rules, you're going to get in trouble and do your own thing, you live a rough and dangerous life, right? So, um, anyway, God tells us to obey him. And we can say, I believe God, I come to Bible club. But does God tell us to do more than come to Bible club? He does. How can we know what God wants us to do? Pray. Pray? Well, that's what us pray, praying is us talking to God. How can we know what God wants us to do? How, how do we can find out what God has told us to do? Reading the Bible. Class? Reading, reading the, the Bible. Bible. And we can't just read the Bible. We can read it, but then what do we have to do? If we read it and we say, oh, God said to do that. And we say, I don't know if I want to do that. Like Mr. Jonathan with his chair. It's like, I don't know if I want to sit there. What does that mean? I don't trust Jonathan, and if God says do this, and I say, I don't know if I want to do this, or I just don't do it. That means I don't trust God. I don't have faith in God. We show that we have faith in God. We show that we trust God by doing the things that he tells us in his word. So we need to think about things that we do in our lives, times in our week, in our day, that God we know God wants us to do certain things. And have we been doing what God wants us to do? Or have we, have we been doing what we want to do? And not even thinking about that God has told us something.